Hey everybody, it's Dana and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm playing with the all to new, newly released Craft Your Life Project Kit. This project kit is going to include one large, beautiful stamp set. This is called Lush Gardens. Love the details of these flowers. Also in the set is going to be a matching set of dies. You're gonna be able to cut the two flowers and the two leaves. Also coordinating stencils to color in all of your images, as well as a beautiful 3D embossing folders. These embossing folders are awesome. So let's go ahead and make the card. Today I've pulled out a couple of inks to make my palette. I went with a pretty corally purple, and I'm also going to add in a dash of navy blue. I'll list all the products below on all the colors that I've used today. The first thing I wanna do is grab my Misty. Since these, these are layering stamp sets, I do tend to lean more towards my Misty instead of an acrylic block in order to line things up perfectly. There are several layers to this flower if you wanted to stamp them. However, I am going to use the stencil for mine today. You can easily layer up these stamps and use just the stamps out of the stamp set, but I love that these Project Life kits are coming with coordinating stencils. The stencils just make it easier for you to quickly color in your images instead of stamping them. I think also you might be able to get more of a blended kind of look with the stencils as far as like how light or how dark you do your your layering compared to if you did it with the stamp set. But either way is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm gonna bring in a few of the leaves and the flowers. Now I do wanna leave some room between these flowers and these leaves because obviously I need to die cut them out. So I wanna make sure that I leave enough room so when I go to die cut them, I'm not actually die cutting into the next leaf or the next flower. Before I get started, I am going to use the new all to new stamp conditioning erasers. These erasers allow you to kind of take off that film that we normally have on brand new stamps and it allows the ink to penetrate into the stamps a little bit better than if you did not, in my opinion, season your stamps. You know, sometimes we get new stamps and we go to stamp and we can't get the crisp line that we're looking for and we have to stamp multiple times. That could be because there's a film left on the stamp when it was made. It's not hazardous, it's not dangerous to anything. It's just a little bit of a coating. So with the stamp, uh, conditioning eraser that alleviates you having to really do all of those double stampings on those new products. All right, now since I have that there, I'm going to grab my tool and go ahead and press that in. Now, once I lift that up, I'm gonna have a great black line. I don't have a lot of the gaps that I would normally have if I didn't condition the stamp. So I think these are a great tool to have in your stamping world in your room or in your kitchen or wherever, I think is a perfect opportunity to condition your stamps before you use them. I'll make sure to link those below as well. Now, since I had this out, I decided to go ahead and stamp my flowers and leaves again, because I need, I'm going to um, keep some for a later time when I'm making a card. And since I'm already stamping, I might as well stamp them out again. One more time, I'm using the Jet Black Altenew ink, and then I can just go ahead and press that down, use my tool to make sure I get a crisp line, and there we have it. Now we can go on and move into creating this card. Now I went ahead and I lined up the coordinating stencil that comes in the project kit, and I'm just going to grab a little bit of tape. Now I did this on a glass mat, so it gave me the opportunity just to tape down my card onto the glass mat um, with just a little bit of tape adhesive right behind the card panel. And then I can go ahead and tape down the stencil just using some micro pore tape. And it also allows me to kind of like block out where I don't want color. So the first two colors I'm going to use are Coral Berry and Crimson. I do have a blending tool here and I'm just going to lightly tap that into the block 
And then I figured, well, you know what? Let me just put some on the glass mat. That's what we have it for, Dana. <laughs> and then I can go ahead and pull in some of that color. Now, this color combination I found online. And anytime I find a pretty color combination that I like, I go ahead and put it to my Pinterest board. I also have a catalog from a sweet woman by the name of Sarah. I'll link her in the description box below. She has a great uh, album that you can purchase. It's digital and it gives you a ton of color combinations. So anytime like you're kind of lost on what colors are going to go well on your card, head on over to my Pinterest board. Now that I had that uh, coral berry, I went ahead and I added in a little bit of that crimson right towards the middle and towards the tips of my flowers. Now, to me, there is no wrong or right way to stencil. It's whatever works for you. If you want to have darker areas or lighter areas, it's totally up to you. Make your card special because, hey, it's your hands that's making it, right? So I'm just going to add a little bit more of that coloring around the edge, and then I'm going to go into coloring up my other images. Now I went ahead and repositioned my stencil so now I can color in my next flower. Again, I'm just using my micro pore tape just to tape this down to my craft mat or my glass mat. And it's just super easy to do it this way and then I can just shift everything around. Now I'm gonna come in with that purple color. So for the purple color, I'm using lavender ink and I'm also going to use the Midnight Lavender. So I have Lavender Fields and Midnight Lavender for this. Now these colors are very um, complementary in a way to the red. Again, make sure to head on over to my Pinterest boards and find my color combinations. And I just really think this one is super, super pretty. I love having these two shades on a card because it's something that you might not expect. You might expect the pink with the purple, but not necessarily a red. So I went ahead and I smushed some of that Midnight Violet down onto my mat, and I'm just coming in around the center first. I'm gonna pull in a little bit more of that Lavender Fields, and then bring that in around the top. Again, there's no wrong way to do this. Do whatever makes you happy. Okay, next I'm gonna go ahead and clean that off and we're gonna move on to our leaves. Now, the leaves are actually pretty gorgeous. So for those, I'm going to use olive and moss. Again, I'm just using some blending tools and I'm putting the ink onto my glass mat and bring it in. Now, at first I'm just gonna do a little bit of dabbing of the color before I actually start moving it in. And you can use light pressure, heavy pressure, again, totally up to you. I am going to move that stencil and find the next leaf. Then I can go ahead and place that over that area and it's super, super easy to line up. So excuse my head being in the way and just making sure I get right on top of that stencil. And then I can go ahead and I'm gonna first start dabbing with the color and then pulling it in. Now I have my base layers down. Now I can go in and start putting in some of the detailed layers. These are the layers that are going to be a little bit stronger. So I'm going to use that moss again, lining that up, and then I'm going to bring some of that in towards the bottom of the leaf. So now if you were using a stamp set with this, obviously that would be your third layer. In the stencil, I'm just putting in, quote, my second layer. So I'm just going to bring that in, line that up. Again, just take some of that ink from my craft mat line it up and then bring a little bit of that in from the bottom. This gives my leaves and my flowers just a tad bit more depth to them without me having to use the stamp. So once I have that down, now I'm just evaluating that I might wanna add in a little bit more of that red. 
Now the red is kind of strong, so I went ahead and dabbed it off on my craft mat and I'm just kind of bringing that into the center of my flower, just to deepen that area up a little bit. And I'm also going to do that with the Midnight Violet. Again, putting it on my craft mat, just bringing in a deeper concentration towards the center of my flowers. Now, since I have that done, I went ahead and I did that twice. I did the second um, set of flowers off camera because I'm just going to keep those later for a different card. Now, since I have this here, now I am going to come in with the layers, but I'm going to skip layer what would be three. So I'm going in with layer four. So your first layer is the outline, your second layer is the uh, fill in piece, the part that I stenciled, and then your third and fourth layers are the ones that really build up everything. So I'm grabbing that stamp conditioner eraser again, because these are solid images. So I just wanna kind of condition those before I go ahead and stamp them. So also when you do that, you kind of leave like a little bit of a eraser mark and you can actually see the outline of the image. When it's a solid image, you can kind of see that a little bit better with the eraser. So I do like using erasers on these solid images because then I can really see the outline of it when I go to stamp. So now I'm coming back in with that crimson. I'm gonna close my lid and then go ahead and press it down. Again, because I conditioned this stamp, I'm not gonna really have that splotchiness that I normally would have. I'm going to have a very pretty impression. I do wanna stamp this a couple of times because remember, I already put some of that crimson down, just sponged it on. So I do wanna make sure I deepen up this layer. Now pull that back. Now you can see I only have two dyes, I mean two ink colors, but look how deep I was able to get that second color. I went ahead and lined up my second one. I'm coming right back in with that Midnight Violet. And then again, I made sure to condition this stamp and then I can go ahead and press down. And this is super easy. I mean, look how gorgeous that is. Again, remember I used the Midnight Violet already in the center, but you can really see how much darker it is now, right? But I do want to double stamp that so I can create even a darker contrast between those flowers. Once I lift that up, you're really going to see how deep that contrast got. Absolutely love it. Now I'm working on the leaves. Again, grabbing that stamp conditioning eraser. I'm telling you guys, if you don't have this, you really need to get them. They're not very expensive. I believe they're like $4.99, and I think there's three of them in the, um, in the set. So now since I have those lined up, I'm going to first go in with my olive. Now remember, the olive was my base color. Remember, I started with that. Moss was the color I blended, uh, second blended with. So I'm going to come in with the olive, and you're going to see, look how big the difference is instead of blending it on and I'm just stamping it. So you can really see the difference of the inks when you use them differently, if you're sponging them on or if you're stamping them on. Now I'm gonna go in with the last layer, I believe this is layer number four. Again, cleaning those or conditioning those stamps and now I'm going to come in with the moss. Now this is going to give me great contrast because this is going to stamp much darker than it did when I was using it, just sponging it on. So one more time, I'm going to deepen that up just so I have a really nice contrast and press that down. All right, now we can go ahead and start cleaning up everything. Now, the one thing I'd like to do is just set my stamps off to the side so I don't lose them. I have such a tendency of losing things on my desk. I don't know about you or any other crafter, <laughs> but I'm forever losing something on my desk. I don't know why. So I went ahead with the flowers and I grabbed the last layer. Again, I'm not using any different color stamps or inks rather, I'm using the same inks. I'm just stamping them multiple times. And that allows me to have a better color range 
especially if you don't have a lot of inks. Remember, double, triple stamp um, with the same ink color is just going to give it more depth. So I like doing that so I can kind of get that contrast, but I don't have to walk across my craft room and get another color of ink. Now, if you have the different colors of ink in Altenew like I have, that's fantastic. You can go ahead and do that. But today, I just wanted to use some simple colors so you know that you can just have a minimal amount of inks, but you can really build up your color. So now, look how gorgeous this is. Absolutely stunning. Remember, I only used four ink pads. All right, so I went ahead and I die cut all of these out. Now this is the exciting part. This is when we get to arrange our elements. So what I like to do is kind of just place everything first down onto my glass mat and kind of see how I like my arrangement before I ever go to a card. I like to just kind of figure out the design, especially if I have not drawn out a layout for my card yet. So this one here, I had not drawn a layout of what I wanted my finished card to be. So this is a perfect way for me to kind of line up everything and see which one I like. I kind of like both of these, but I think I'm going to stick with the one on the left. I think that's the one I want to go with. Now I can come in and bring in my card panel. Now, remember, I had that blue. I know you're thinking that's kind of odd, but this blue is going to look gorgeous with this card. Again, reaching for those color palettes that we normally wouldn't reach for. So for this one here, I am using the, I think this is called the Sphere Lines um, stencil from Altenew. I'll make sure to link it below. And I just have a piece of Nina Solo White cardstock. I'm taping that down again to my glass mat and I'm going to use this gorgeous color. This color is called Arctic Mountain. It's a beautiful navy. So I have my little mini blending tool from Altenew and I'm going to pull up that ink off of that glass mat. Now, I don't know if you can see in the corner of my mat, but I actually have it personalized with my blog information. So right there, Godjoy Creations, that is what I'm known for on my blog and also on a lot of my other social media, but I will put a link at the end of this video with all of my social media so you can go over there and check me out as well. I'll also put a link, I believe I still have the link to the glass mat. Um, it is absolutely wonderful and I like the fact that I can personalize it with my blog information. All right, so now I'm coming in with that Arctic Mountain and I'm trying to leave the center of it a little bit lighter than the outside. This is just kind of give me like a little bit of a gradation and just keeping the color super, super light in the middle. I'm just barely touching the stencil with that brush. But again, I do wanna come in and make the outer parts. This kind of gives you like a really cool, almost optical illusion, may I say. <laughs> if you darken up things around the edge, it kind of makes it stand out a little bit more. So that's why I'm making sure to pull in a lot of that color just into the corners of everything. Now, once I have this done and pull this back, I always love the reveal. The reveal to me is like Christmas with stencils. I don't know what, how it is for you, but like for me, it's like total Christmas. All right, so I'm just making sure I get that blended on there nicely. And now here comes the fun part, lifting up the stencil. So I can just grab that micro pore tape and pull that back. And look how gorgeous it is. Look how gorgeous it is by having the darker color to the outside and kind of fading into that soft color into the middle. And I also like it because I'm not wasting ink on what might be covered by the flowers. So I can use this design here or I can go back into the first layout that I had and use this. Either way would look beautiful on this card panel. I love how this turns out. Okay, next I wanna bring in a sentiment and I want the sentiment to be that Arctic blue color. So again, I'm just going to smush that out on my craft mat. I will bring in my blending tool 
and I will pull this color in. Now this is fantastic when you don't have cardstock that matches your ink color. Create your own cardstock, you guys. Just go ahead and pull out those inks and make your own. Now this was blending and I didn't like it. I needed it to be darker. So I just went ahead and took the ink pad directly to the paper. And that really gave me the darker blue that I wanted. And then I can just go ahead and grab the rest of that ink and blend that on. I'm not gonna waste any of that ink that's already on my mat. I'm just gonna use it to kind of fill in some of the white nooks and crannies. Now I have cardstock that's going to match my blue background. I went ahead and I pulled out one of the sentiments and I'm going to emboss this sentiment. I want to emboss it in white so I can keep the color combinations going, but this would also look beautiful even if you stamped it in gold. I think it would look stunning if you added some gold gems at the end of the card or if you added some gold splatter. I'm just going to do it with white. So I made sure to stamp that twice and then I'm going to go ahead and heat emboss this. I have my heat embossing off to the side and this is Hero Arts white embossing powder. This is the detail white embossing powder. And since I have so much of it, I just put it into a container. I have several containers of white embossing powder. White seems to be like my go-to. I have white, gold, and silver is what I usually use the most. Now, once I get that on there, if I have any little straggly bits, I can just go ahead and grab a dry paintbrush and I keep this on my desk. This is only for embossing powders. I do not use this when I'm watercoloring. And I can go ahead and clean up any strays that I have and get my gun nice and hot before I bring it to my card. This is going to help prevent warping as well. But you can see how hot my gun was as quickly as that embossing melted. All right, let's go ahead and start building up our card. Now, since I have all the elements elements of my card done, I'm going to bring in a white card base and this is Nina Solar White 110 pound. Now I like to use the 110 pound for my card bases and I like to use the 80 pound if I'm doing layering. So I'm just using my EK Success scoring um, board and then I can make sure I have a good line, a good crease. If you don't have a scoring board, I would definitely recommend having one. Um, it really does make your scoring a lot more crisper on your cards. And sometimes, you know, you have a tendency where your cards like kind of flop over or they kind of bow. That's because you don't have a great crease in them. So just make sure to crease them well. I made sure that my top panel was the same size as my card front. I could have stenciled onto my card base, but I, I kind of don't like doing that. I like to make sure that I have a little bit of a, um, I, I don't like the ink to, to possibly have the chance to soak through on my card stock. So I kind of like to just have that layering piece on top. But if you're not worried or concerned about that, don't worry about stenciling on just the white piece of paper. You can totally stencil onto the card base. I think I'm just so used to this now. <laughs> That is really hard for me to revert to doing something different. So, okay, so now I have that on there and this is a standard A2 card size. I'm going to bring in some foam tape because I do want some of my elements to be popped up. Now you can totally just glue this down with, without dimension, but I kind of like to have dimension on my cards. So this is just 3M tape. And I'm just going to place a couple pieces of this onto the backs. Now, make sure to grab this kit because I'm not sure like when they sell out, like how long it takes for them to come back in stock. So make sure to grab yours before they run out. And also don't forget to grab those stamp conditioning erasers. I mean, they're, they're fantastic. I don't use any stamps now unless I really condition them. I'm trying to really get into the habit of stamping more effectively without me having to worry about stamping several times. So I changed up my arrangement just a little bit of where I had it before. And now I'm gonna bring in that sentiment and look how perfectly those blues go together. Cause remember, I did not have cardstock that matched this. So I made my own. I'm going to change it up one more time because I didn't like the position. 
I wanted my sentiment to, to be seen, but I didn't want it to really be covering up any of the gorgeous flowers that I created. So once I have everything where I want it, now I'm going to actually glue down the leaf. The leaf does not need to be popped up. So I'm just gonna glue that down and I'm just going to have my flowers be the dimension on my cards. I can go ahead and place that down. And now all I have to do is remove the backing of my uh, double-sided tape on my flowers and then I can place them down. Now this is a color combination I might not have thought to use, but I actually love it. I love these colors together. Again, grabbing um, colors from Sarah's book or from Pinterest boards really allows you to kind of think outside the box when it comes to your color combinations. I know sometimes I can get in a rut and just want to use the same colors over and over and over again. And that's great, don't get me wrong, because you know what colors work well together. But try sometimes to just think outside of the box, see what colors match, see what a different color palette could feel like. You'll be amazed how you can transform your cards by kind of going outside of the original color combination that you're so used to using. All right, now since I have my double-sided tape on my sentiment, I can go ahead and press that down. And look how gorgeous this card looks. I just have two florals. I like the three on here with just the one leaf and the two flowers. Next, I felt like I wanted to add a little bit of color. So I grabbed out some Nouveau Drops. I have a tendency not to use these very often. So I'm making sure that I use the supplies now in my room. And I'm gonna actually add those colors to the center of my flowers because I could have stamped this yellow in the middle, but instead I wanted to give it a little bit of dimension. So I placed the two colors on top of each other. It's English, English mustard and daffodil yellow, or dandelion yellow, excuse me. I placed them on top of each other, and then I'm just going to grab a uh, tweezer and kind of just blend the colors together. And when this dries back, it's going to be very dimensional right in the center. Now, once I have that done, I'm going to pull in a little bit more of that yellow by just placing some Nouveau drops randomly around this card panel. I'm trying to stay within the circle that I created for my card. I don't wanna go outside of that. I want all of the focus to be directly into the center of my card. So I added just a couple of drops of the mustard yellow and I finished off with the dandelion. And look how gorgeous this card is. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. And don't forget, here are all my social media links if you would like to find me over there as well. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.